I now have two bee trucks taking up space in the shop. Moved the main bee truck in today to thaw out and to install the electric power pack that I had bought. So this, it's a little bit different specs than what was originally on here. The electric power pack that was on here earlier was, what was it? quarter gallon per minute and 1500 PSI which seemed a little shy to me but that's what the specs showed me this one is three quarter gallon per minute at uh, 2500 PSI so up the pressure more gallons per minute and this is as close as to a electric power pack as I could get. So I might have to turn down or provide a restriction if the pressure is too high, as long as I don't interrupt my flow. But I should have enough there playing around between the quarter that I had before up to three quarters now to be able to provide enough flow to service this unit. The motor looks a lot different. It's a little bit smaller. And I don't know anything about that, if it means anything. My reservoir is pretty much hand to mouth, he was saying. They like to have a reservoir bigger than that, but the trick is I gotta fit it inside the housing. All right, this is a high spec uh, unit that they put together for me. So the next thing that I have to figure out is now my mounting off the motor has to plumb into these hydraulic blocks. And the manifold I have will not fit onto that. So what I'm doing is modifying it. Ah, another modifying job. So what I have to do first off is I'm installing this harness. I'm mounting a plate to be able to hold this harness rigid so it's not just flopping around. And I built myself a little brace kind of overkill, but this is steel I had in the shop here, so I'm using it. So that's going to be mounted inside there to hold this whole valve assembly secure. And then I have to, yeah, so then my mounting doesn't fit at the bottom. I still have an inch clearance here and three quarter inch clearance on that side, so it fits, so it's good. Just I have to build another plate. And again, overkill, but this is what I have in the shop. So I'm going to be building a plate here to go underneath to sec secure this. I'm going to weld this onto the frame and this is going to bolt onto this little plate. So it'll be secure and then from there, from my manifold, I'm going to have either... Uh, I'm not sure yet because this will be secured over here and this will be secure so it should both pieces should be solid. I might be able to then modify a rigid connection between the two. Or I might go with a rubber mount just to provide a little bit of tolerance, you know, vibration and such. So that might be a little bit much to go like that. I might have to loop it around like this. I'm not exactly sure with that. Because what I'm doing is I'm modifying the manifold and I'm just in the process of modifying it. These are the original two taps that... So that goes on to the block. And then this went on to the original uh, motor where the oil flew, flowed into. So what I have to do is I'm just tapping them out. I'm going to put a screw in there, Allen screw. To block those off and then what I'm going to do this side bolts on to the hydraulic block and on the other side I'm going to drill two I don't know half inch fittings you know you know you get the point something that I can screw hydraulic fitting into so this will be solid and it'll just be a plate really to be able to screw in the hydraulic fittings I 
Teflon tape those up and those will act like plugs. So now I just got to drill out the other side. Further modifications. I have everything in place now and I think I've developed a game plan. So that's how things are going to look. I've moved the whole hydraulic block over to leave space for the hydraulics to come up from the motor. So this has caused a little bit of congestion over on this side where they've originally had everything moved over centered so you could get to the fuses. That's going to be a problem, you know. Something I'll curse at later. I guess I can move these hoses and get a wrench in there to pull these fuses out and replace them as I need. These relays I'm never really at. The grounding wires in here I have to redo because I'm always... If there's something wrong in this loader, it's typically because of this ground block here. So I have to redo all these ends. You can see I can kind of put one on there because it come out of its attachment. So I have to solder those on properly so I don't have to actually I can actually move that to the other side to get better access to it but at any rate this is what it's going to look like as soon as I get the motor mounted to the frame and things are as square as I can get it so I'm not going to hard wire or hard pipe or whatever you want to call it from here to the motor. I don't want that rigid. So it's going to cause problems. So what I could do is just bring it from the motor the 90 up, have just a little bit of rubber into a connecting piece into the block here, into the manifold. But I think that might make two of a rigid connection. So what I'll probably do is bring the hydraulic hose up loop it around like that and in and that'll provide a lot of grace a little bit of you know air and if there's any vibration it's not going to provide any pressure between these two connection points because this thing bangs down the road all day long I mean, you can see my circuit board here come loose because of the you know jarring so I'm, I'm going to buy new rubber mounts to be able to connect the circuit board back on. That is not good. That has to be secured. I had that taped on there just to keep it from jiggling. Well, that's how much jarring this, you know, you can imagine if this is on the back of a trailer. But I think it's going to work. As long as I don't, like, if I ever have to get at the blocks, which I rarely, rarely, rarely have to, I'll just undo them off the mount so everything slides over. Yeah. I don't know. So that's my plan. That's how I'm going to put it together. So that's tomorrow's job. All right, right now it's 6.30 and it's time for supper.